friends and friendly subscribers welcome back to my channel this is inner hill tarot and today we're going to do a video response to uh three fat leader three fat readers it's called uh hashtag thankful tarot 23 so i think this um hashtag was supposed to be for thanksgiving but because I don't celebrate Thanksgiving and I prefer to do it now because we're like three to two weeks uh, before the new year and I would like to use it as a reflective time for which um, tarot decks that has been instrumental in my personal development and this is these are decks that i'm not using for um clients normally but it's solely for my personal development okay so without further ado let's do the first prompt and yeah it's quite nice actually this uh hashtag because it's really give me a time to think about which deck that actually really helps me during the year so the first prompt is a tarot that gives you a valuable lesson and i would say the voyager tarot it's really it actually why um because it's very interesting okay i was just saying that i'm not going to use the deck that's being used for clients but actually this is exactly the decks that i'm actually learning because i'm using it with clients so basically this deck the furniture tarot um i got a lot of valuable lesson because i'm using it with um with my clients during uh what do you call it during a cacao ceremony and i'm using them because i get to do my um psychology uh, lesson um together with them and also it's bring out so much fun to do it in a, a workshop environment for a group workshop and it's just because the deck in itself it's quite complicated and it's like the one of the original uh cutout and collage deck in my opinion i don't know if you know even older um uh cutouts or collage deck that's um more original than voyager tarot please let me know in the comments um but it's just like it's kind of give me the chills sometimes when when i see clients pick up a, a card right in front of me and so my method is quite different maybe so i let the client choose a card and sometimes i get the chills when i see they're like oh my god this is what i was just thinking so for example someone was just thinking someone was identified as a surfer for example let's just say and in this deck there are like there is like a the knight of cups is the surfer i think and it's just give her goosebumps and give me goosebumps as well and like a few days ago for example i also got a client who's looking at one part of the card for example like this one also had it like this the first um, man on the moon uh, footprint and immediately it's giving the prompt to have like a um what do you call it uh, an ancestor wanted to talk to her and <clears throat> yeah lo and behold you know when i take out some uh, decks that resonated with the ancestor it's very resonating to her 
So I, um, I think I really love this deck now. Um, yeah, because it's just, it's just give me something that I never thought that I could do with a tarot decks before. I, you know, it gives me the idea of expanding how to expanding um, reading with myself and my clients basically so yeah even for my own development sometimes because the deck is so busy the cards so what i do is just like i'm only taking one or two cards and meditate it with the card you know and it's just it's quite revealing it's very very revealing and on obviously because the name is Voyager Tarot so at the first glance it felt like um, kind of star CD feelings within it but the star CD feelings within it I don't I don't feel like uh, like that most of the time it's more actually my psychological uh, takings about it or even the ancestor work which is for me it's quite mind-blowing when that happens so that's that's that about this deck and yeah i'm looking forward to work more with it you know in the future and also the book that it's uh, this book james wanless i'm going to use it as well for some of my essays um and i think in the new year that's what i'm going to do uh, connected with the psychological work that i'm doing this deck okay so i'm really happy with this deck now and i'm happy that i got the uh the older one because now i think there are smaller uh cards and also it's a different um different feeling of printing i think uh, i could be wrong please let me know if you know <laughs> yeah so that's that the first prompt Tarot that gives me valuable lesson. Uh, and number two, the the prompt is deck that you are gifted this year by other people. Uh, and I will say this is like Ananda Tarot by Ananda uh, Kurt Please. And I got this deck as some sort of Valentine um, gift from my husband um there it's a complicated story <laughs> behind it actually uh yeah but basically we were supposed to go somewhere in europe and my um my visa didn't came out on time and <laughs> so because there's our they're like mavia now to book uh to book appointment to go some uh, to go to some destination in Europe basically and most of them are like uh, Mavia to get the appointment um, basically it's like most of it is the Indian and the Chinese agents so it's like you try to book the appointment in the website uh, for vfs i think that's it's called for um other people other than in british citizen to make um eu schengen visa but i think because of this mafia is so rampant and they're not online and they're just like word to mouth so what they did is they just hog the uh time appointment they bought them in advance and on 
and then they resell it with double the price just for the um, appointment time so then i didn't get to <laughs> do the uh, the visa requirement on time so i couldn't leave and my husband left by himself in the end um but then he gave uh, he bought me several tarot decks and one of it is like the ananda tarot and i couldn't believe when he got it because it's it's first of all it's out of print um and it's like it costs gazillion <laughs> pounds if if i had to buy it in here probably in some online store or something in ebay or something like that and second of all, most of the time it's only available in German because I think Ananda Kurt, Kurt Pils is in German uh, uh, as German citizen, I mean. So that to have it in English and and it was it was still new. It's not uh, used. You can see the unboxing video in this channel so i was like flabbergasted because yeah this is like one of those air deck that's just really beautiful and i actually don't get to use that that much to be honest and i'm a little bit uh, taken aback sometimes because it felt very woo woo upon uh, inspection but to have it in my collection is a bit wow for myself you know like for example this ten of swords look at this it's so beautiful and to me it's like an air traffic and it's also this simultaneous a lot of energy from different um, stars from different planets that affecting life in earth but also life in their own planets as well um it's just giving a different energy to the ten of swords you know it's not just an ending on something but it's also a possibility to see beyond and there's a reason for these endings also it's probably um because the lines or the stars doesn't match up or something like that so it's a very interesting very interesting uh, deck actually it's a little bit pipish it's somewhat pipish and um uh it's between pipish and um landscape right it's like circumstantial um so yeah especially the swords elements it's a little bit out there and it doesn't really correlate with Rader white smiths you see it's like all in the minds but not like personal mind but uh, more like collective minds something about collective unconsciousness this ones so <laughs> it's all about the swords here that you get to see but you, but you know what I mean. It's a really beautiful, gentle energy deck. And I'm glad that my husband um, gifted to me. Um, and he said that the price is also quite good. It's not breaking the bank, certainly. So I'm just like really glad. I'm really happy to, get, to have this deck in my collection, actually. So that's that. That's number two. Okay, prompt number two, three is like a deck that uh, gives you a new perspective on tarot. I should say this deck number three is this one, Turning Terrestrial Tide Tarot. And first of all, I thought when I saw it in Kickstarter, it would be like a big deck. Like at least something this size like tarot of the divine size kind of thing but this one is like really cute it's kind of smallish but because my hands is also not big so it's nice to have it 
in my hands basically and this deck is give me a different a new perspective in tarot because it felt like it's so modern and i felt like okay this is like a kind of deck that i'm just going to use once in a while when i just need a quick something and you know it's just like a party deck or something whenever i have friends who doesn't like the woo stuff um, and we can approach it from a modern point of view but lo and behold you know it's one of the most accurate um, and I don't want to say it esoteric but it's actually it's one of the most um, it is modern and modernly connected to Raider White Smith energy actually um, interestingly and also the keyword here it's it's really beautiful like the moon when you cannot see feel and then there's still this wolf you know that howling at the moon everything looks different in the dark and it's just like these keywords that give you a very tangible um workings with the environment today so therefore outside of my um my own personal development this is a deck that also works well with client especially new um ex new not executive what i mean to say but it's just like new white color workers or something like this normally i will use a midnight uh, ct tarot um but uh, recently this deck is taken over a little bit than midnight city tarot for me um because of the the wordings you know it's very beautiful like the full there's a, like a baby and it's like jump 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 you know like no risk no rewards it's just like it's very modern feel to it and i glad i got it when it's available in um in a more available um price because now i think they raised the price quite significantly for this deck um so i just and i didn't get it in um in kickstarter and i was kicking myself about it and then i saw it as um as an add-on when it was like liberation tarot kickstarter started and i'm st and then in the end i cancelled the pledge um and then i was like shit should i should have done that because i really want to have this but then this is this was available in amazon i think and then i just snatched it up and i'm so glad i did and yeah it gives me a new perspective on tarot and in a way that is just because it looks so modern it doesn't mean that it's not accurate you know it's on the contrary it's very accurate and i got one of my psychological aspects uh find that out by this deck you can check it out in my um in my instagram which is inner hill tarot where i do this i i use this deck and i um made a post about it it's it's, it's really potent so that's that number four deck that you offered you comfort this year during dark times and i have to say for that prompt um let me see where is that deck okay during that dark times hold on i have to say it's this deck the high tarot um yeah i mean this year there's so many things going on isn't it in personal and 
both in personal and professional level and also the world um, in general this year it's kind of bleak to me you know to have people um, protesting about the things that's happening in other side of the world um which is nice and all of course it's nice to see people concentrating on um worldly problems as well as their own personal problems i hope that just means that people are not just thinking about themselves but also others but then also we have um things that artwork being um you know vandalized in museums and stuff like that and it's give me a really a hard time to understand this you know what did artwork has to do with anything <laughs> sometimes i'm just a little bit sad about that and that give me um the darkness in believing that human nature can do better than we are currently doing so the high tarot is really beautiful for me to connect with this side of myself which is grief because also the the creator of this deck created this particular deck because i think because to reconcile the grief over uh the passing of uh, the artist father so and so for me it's like um very resonating to connect uh with grief in this way it's kind of like black and white and normally i don't go for black and white deck i like colorful deck but sometimes when i'm just feeling a little bit depressed and down and i think in my personal life actually i don't have anything i don't have much to grieve for a lot of things that i'm striving for is something that i know that i have to strive for um it's not it's not uh, a surprise for me but what's surprising is something that's happening all the time in london uk you know sometimes it's just disappointing to me how not just the people but also how the establishment the government do things you know <coughs> um yeah that gets me amped <laughs> anger and then goes through grief basically okay moving on from the from the uh politics side of it this deck in itself um in a way is very simplistic and not because um, it's just giving me a lot of different um, feelings whenever i use it for example the rosemary as the empress it's give me because yeah you give me a a lot of um hidden insight actually because as the empress the rosemary is one of it is ever evergreen shrubs in the uk so sometimes even though it's snowing the rosemary is still there you know it's still it's not withered away or something like that and then in spring summer it gives us a beautiful tiny uh, flowers for example so it's just give you this different side of the empress um, archetype instead of like a woman who's pregnant and ready to give you um, 
nuts and bolts and all the kitchen sink for you <laughs> it feels like the empress is also someone who um teach you stability you know someone or something that be there for you through thick and thin basically right so that also can be the energy of the empress you know the parrot queen of wands of course it's like very colorful bird very like me this is my personality i'm colorful just sometimes i identify as well but you see like the color is quite somber so i love it whenever i felt down it's give me a soothing and it give me permission uh, to feel down i don't need to feel happy every time i don't understand the meaning of the anemone with three of swords though if anybody used this deck and know what it means please let me know i know there's a guidebook and i have the guidebook but i still don't get it whenever i see this card interesting let me know in the comments okay but that is one of my um consoling deck this year the high tarot by dan francis also because in london most people wear black all the time so it's kind of give me permission to breathe about london dressing <laughs> ah okay the number five deck that you are grateful took a chance on okay that deck would be this beauty the mirror vision oh my god i so happy i took a chance on it and and i took a chance on it also part of it i'm kind of touched by this artist james or eds I think that's his name and he's also like give me the signature on the deck and it's called here advanced copy yeah so i'm so glad i took a chance on it so what's happening is in the beginning of the uh, campaign in um in kickstarter i actually already campaign uh, i already put in our back the advanced copy but for some reason oh i know why because um at one night i did like a really heavy dose of um, mushroom and I started to question myself, um, should I should I do this? You know, maybe just like a regular deck is enough. So I canceled the pledge and I went on a full on uh, mushroom um, situations where I saw like the world in a holographic states like this. And I immediately know the next morning that I regret my decision to cancel that pledge. And then I went in again because i woke up like 15 hours later it was a very heavy dose i didn't know that i took so much actually but i did and so i took a very heavy dose and afterwards the next day i tried to pledge again and it was um it was already uh, sold out, you know, it was only seven advanced copy. And I was like, oh my God, please. I really know I'm regretting my decision because during that, um, during, during that, um, maybe I should better to do the card also. During that mushroom uh, p uh, episode, I also saw the world in, in the terms of holographic and lenticular uh, lens at the same time and i was like oh my god i'm so regretting this but i w it was i was already in a full-on state and uh, at that time and i couldn't use my computer at all so then the next day it's already um backed out <laughs> like like I, it's already done like the 
there's seven people back this advanced copy and i was checking every day two three times if anyone backed out again from this advanced copy um and no one did actually until the last 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 five minutes of the uh, kickstarter um and then someone uh backed out and immediately i <laughs> jumped on it you know and i'm so glad that i did because i think there will be like significant change between the advanced copy and um the real the real deck later on that we're going to get like in um february or something like this january february which is not that far away and i get to work with it already and it's very interesting as well because as a deck in itself uh mira uh cosma vision and prisma vision i wasn't really interested in it um because of a lot of chinese pirated this deck basically and to me it's like it's a heartbreaking thing and yeah for some reason i'm just not into it um but with this as a lenticular it's kind of really makes sense because the cosma vision part is um explaining the the past life that we could have taken on the the energy like this elementalist and the uh, prisma vision part is giving us the Raider White Smith version of that um, energy which is like today so it feels to me that um, whenever I got especially the court cards from this deck is there's something um inside of me either in a so my own soul level or from my bodily ancestor from my bodily ancestor in this body now that is activated during this time and what to do with this energy you know so it's quite mystical also because sometimes when i use this deck sometimes it's just like the mirror vi the the cosma vision part that came out sometimes it's only the prisma vision uh part that came out so for me it's quite a spooky deck uh, but at the same time it's kind of remind me as well about the um the mushroom uh, episode that i have that i actually cancelled it stack to to replace it again and it's quite a very interesting um kickstarter experience for me and james is such a professional artist and the way he handled um communication in kickstarter which is also um, a feat in itself, I guess. And the way he explained um, the campaign, the way he writes it, it, it's very understandable. And you can just see the way his mind thinking how to uh, bring his creation moving forward and kept on being relevant, you know? and i think this is one of the way to keep it relevant and and not boring and how can you make a deck that has been um that got an insult basic assaulted basically right by the the pirated decks that out there how can you keep being in love in your own project make it moving forward and bringing something new to the table for your audience basically it's it's what can i say it's like it's um esoteric lesson uh, it's an art lesson for sure because the way he um, make his deck is very particular he make it as like one big a picture that he slices up and on top of that it's so it's like 
a lesson in a different um a different level you know it's in art lesson it's in esoteric lesson past life connecting with today's energy and it's a business lesson as well you know how do you make people pay that they pay for an advanced copy how do you do that and for me it's like it's 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 professionalism in the next level um in the world of tarot that can be quite confusing and quite noisy how do you get your point of view across you know it's and i'm really glad i took a chance on this actually um it's give me uh, also a way to pause within myself so how can i do um my own practices that can be uh, more appealing to people you know So that's that and I'm thankful for James to keep believing in his own art and I'm thankful for myself also to take a chance on it and then last of the and but not least the last prompt is deck that has become the workhorse this year for me I have to say this deck is this one the I am the artist tarot by Saki Saki? Oh my god, this deck <laughs> both for my personal development and for uh, client reading, it has been really helpful. I'm so thankful for Monica to uh, revamp and rebirth this deck basically um because what's what happening um this year um in the middle east it's just to me it makes this deck more relevant really um and i have to say this is my core deck of the year because i'm it's just I'm already connected with the Saki Saki Tarot previously, but I'm kind of like semi retiring my deck because it's um, the out of print version of this deck. And because she revamped this deck, the artist Monica, and add more um, bonus card, it's just it feels like more relevant to today basically it doesn't say that the old saki saki is not relevant anymore but it's just like from the um from the format of the card and from the fact that now they all have heads it's felt more complete now and without leaving the essence and i don't know it's just like something about this deck whenever i read with it i can connect with it immediately you know the meaning and everything and also the part of this whereas the shadow part that contained in um in every card is actually monica says in the book that this is is her signature uh, personal signature of the art and it's just like quite stunning because not every um artist thinking about the shadow part the the way they give shadows to their deck you know and this deck has the shadow in spades like a different kind of it to make it more personal and to me it's like she's someone who hugs her shadow part of her to make it her shadow part of the deck is her signature and uh, yeah it's quite incredible and other than that she's making her deck relevant by creating a tarot challenge um with the spreads that she created herself 
like basically the whole spreads that i'm learning so far so far is about how do you make your life as an art basically right how do you see yourself as an art how do you do things differently from other people not just for the sake of doing it differently but because that's who you are you know and it's it's quite moving for me and you can also um, follow the challenge if you go to her instagram and see it for yourself all of the challenge that i did with um her her prompt has always given me a lot of very meaningful insight in my self-development and it's really nice to do it with a deck that is so colorful and happy you know it's kind of just reminds me again that we learn things more and easier when we are in a happy mood and in, in not in a stressful mode you know and yeah i wish all the best for um for monica and really thank her to create such a beautiful deck that's kept being re relevant you know it's already more than 20 years now this deck and it's still beautiful it's still sought after i'm just so happy i have them this is the first out of print deck i mean the sake sake that i have ever <laughs> and i'm so proud of myself that i'm got them and now i got the i am the artist tarot as well so that is it my friends and friendly subscribers that is the prompt that is the the i mean the video for thankful tarot 23 vr to three back reader readers and i'm just so glad let me use this video also to say thank you for your subscribing for your likes for your comments in a lot of my videos they are so helpful for my own self-development as well as much as the tarot decks help me but also you rocks you show up to my channel and it's really gives me an affirmation that my channel has um space in all of this youtube all of these superstar youtube channelers and superstars youtube um creators and superstars youtube reviewers you know and i'm just new here and i'm not really someone who's like come on look at me now and you know over marketing my channel and i think also my channel is not really something that a lot of people i mean a lot of people doing unboxing and silent flip through but i think i I don't know maybe i'm really regular as well actually that's why i'm not really standing out but i hope that every uh, video that i put out there can help someone to determine if this um certain decks are really for them or not you know are if they're missing the decks that they already um rehoming for example and it's in my collection of videos i hope they can um see the energy again and connecting with the energy again of that tax that is my hope you know um so yeah thank you so much for all of your support this year in 2023 and i hope i can bring um better quality videos better knowledgeable insights in the unboxing and flip through and the reviews as well okay so have a good holiday times this year i don't think i'm going to upload that many videos for the last two weeks because i'm busy and 
I need to take a break as well. But I guess I see you in 2024. See you then. Bye.